Content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Welcome to Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre, McIntyre Retirement Services, Northwest Ohio's retirement planning resource. And welcome into the program. This is your game plan for retirement with Northwestern Ohio's resource for a common sense approach to planning for your financial and investment future. He is Chris McIntyre, president and founder of McIntyre Retirement Services. Chris, welcome back in. Hi, Peter. Good to be with you this weekend. Always a pleasure, Chris. We appreciate the time, the guidance, the insight, perspective that you share with us and the listeners and viewers here on the podcast each and every week and always talking about important matters, news of the day, the information that we need to know in order to do the best things and make the best decisions for our financial futures. Chris, it's a difficult economic world out there to say the least. A lot of challenges have have come up and really faced us in the beginning in the first half of 2020. Boy, that's a that's an understatement, and you know we can measure these things by the unemployment rate. Um, you know, uh, Congress has been tackling this continuation of the stimulus bill and whatnot, and you know we've got social unrest out there. We've got nervous investors, um, and we still had a you know one heck of a recovery in the stock market. And you know we heard the president talk about uh, you know getting a V-shaped type recovery program in play where. You know, if the market has fallen substantially because they had to shut things down, then they're, you know, trying to restart things quickly to get back to where we were. That's what you'd call the V-shaped recovery. And, you know, it's hard to say if that's actually going to pan out. And, you know, we head into an election cycle. So, you know, we've got a pretty big political divide going right now. And, you know, maybe everybody needs to drink a cup of decaf and, you know, uh, a couple more deep breaths and just remember to be a little kinder to one another and, you know, kind of let things bounce off of us like we used to in the past and, you know, let the uh, let the temperature come down a little bit. Well, again, Chris, we've we've got to uh, appreciate the bounce back that we have seen in the market, but it's not without its challenges. Just because the market is back does not necessarily mean that the average Main Street American nor the economy has regained full strength. And I think that it's a little bit of an opportunity here, Chris, to really kind of reflect and review that uh, as of the recording of this program, uh, the the market is back. The S&P, we'll gauge it from that. The S&P is back to where it was on January 2nd of this year. And so is that a time to sort of review and reassess and really kind of take account of are we correctly positioned? And is it an opportunity that if we're not correctly positioned to get that way? Sure. It's almost like you got a second chance, uh, you know, and to, to redo this again and to rethink your strategies. And, you know, Peter, we do a lot of safe money, you know, with the clientele that we deal with uh, in retirement, getting ready for retirement. Um, and, you know, we always talk about having a safe strategy. And this year we've done a record amount of business with the safe money strategies and, you know, the type of planning that we do. And, you know, we like to think we have a niche in the marketplace, of course, and, you know, we're, we're very objective. We look at all different types of assets and, you know, from risk assets to income assets to truly safe assets. And, you know, that's been the challenge here, you know, millions of Americans heading into retirement and tens of millions, we could say, uh, heading into retirement with historically low interest rates. It's not like they can park half a million dollars in a CD paying 5% and just draw the interest off and maintain principal. You know, we're not going to have that for the, you know, the foreseeable future, let's say. And so how do you invest and how do you create a portfolio? And, you know, you had uh, sent me a, a neat article from Kiplinger's magazine for some talking points here for the show. And one of them is, you know, what some of the risk, I think they identified 13, 14 risks there. One of them is too much stock in your portfolio. And you know, we could certainly make that um, analogy that, hey, a lot of people have too much stock in their portfolio, but where else are they going to invest? Right. Yeah. And, and so, Chris, are clients that you're talking to and investors that, that, that are looking for answers and solutions, are they now more uh, apt to consider? Are they uh, 
really looking at those safe money strategies with, with a new light? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, you, you got to separate the misinformation from the disinformation to the real information, if you will. And, you know, as a true financial advisor and investment advisor, that is what we do for folks and say, look, we understand there is no perfect investment out there. Here are the drawbacks. Here are the benefits. And, you know, kind of do the old Ben Franklin, you know, here's the good side. Here's the bad side. Is the, does the good side outweigh the bad side? Because you can make that argument on an FDIC insurance uh, insured certificate of deposit at the bank that, hey, it's FDIC insured. So it truly is safe but it doesn't keep pace with inflation. So it has risk to it, the inflation risk. And, you know, part of our job is the education process. And, you know, we have a, a, a nice book of business, you know, uh, uh, we've been in this a long time. And, you know, so we consult and coach uh, our clients and, you know, we typically have four to six Zoom appointments or phone appointments or Skype appointments every day with current clients reviewing them. Um, you know, as we went through the of the onset of the pandemic as we de-risk and now as we look for additional opportunities and adding what we call some satellite positions to our clients portfolios you know they have a core portfolio and then like technology obviously would be an extra satellite you may might may overexpose a little bit or or have a little additional exposure is what i meant to say not overexpose Yep, but uh, diversification, obviously important there because there are pros and cons to everything. There is no perfect solution. Otherwise, why would be, there be any need for any other options? But again, to, to weigh all of those options and to find the correct mix and allocation for your situation, you've got to have a discussion about those goals, about your intentions, about your desires and, and your outlook for your financial future. Doing that with a fiduciary planner advisor is certainly going to be a benefit. And Chris McIntyre offers guidance here on the radio program, but also a personal and individual opportunity for you to get proactive advice and recommendations from a fiduciary. If you'd like to take him up on that offer, pick up the phone, give a call, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. You can also go online, McIntyreRetirementServices.com, McIntyreRetirementServices.com. Excellent resources available there. Chris, you brought up the Forbes article. It was 14 reasons you might go broke in retirement. Now, you know, kind of an ominous title there, but it's pointing out 14 potential issues. And if we can identify these ahead of time, if we can plan strategically to try to avoid them, I think that that would go a long way. You, you mentioned one of them, being overexposed to stocks. They kind of covered their, their bases there and looked at both sides of the spectrum because another one on the list was... Uh, to abandon stocks completely. Neither one of those is, is probably the correct answer. Right, and you know, we have a number of people listening to the show today and probably a number of different risk tolerances to be fair. And you know, um, keeping up with inflation is one of the reasons people invest with, in stocks. Gold has been a hot commodity literally uh, this year as the interest rate environment is down significantly. Uh, that. Uh, historically does very well for the price of gold. So, you know, adding a number of different elements to a truly diversified portfolio is in clients' best interest. And we've talked about bonds on the show here before. So as people get older, they will normally allocate more resources in the fixed income space, if you will, quote unquote, for those of you not looking at us on the video. Um, but with the historically low interest rate environment we have, every corporation out there that is refinancing debt or you know um, at taking on new debt is taking that on at a lower interest rate, which means lower bond payments. So you know we're we're investing in future lower rates of return in that respect. So another challenge for investors there would be the bond market. Absolutely. The, the low interest rates, Chris, you pointed out about uh, CDs at the bank uh, in the fixed income market. I believe the 30 year treasury is barely above 1%, maybe a little lower than one and a half percent and anything up to about the 20 year treasury is lower than 1%. So it's awfully hard to find a solution that can preserve principal and where we can live off the interest and then do that securely. And so investors may be pushed to take more risk, which exposes them to higher susceptibility to the volatility of the market. In other words, chasing higher returns could be a negative impact. We've been taught, Chris, 
that we have to take more risk in order to get more returns uh, or better returns. But that has not necessarily proven out to hold true over the last 20 years. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's the modern portfolio theory concept is, you know, I guess taking the right risk here. And, you know, uh, BlackRock's got a nice piece that I uh, show a lot of current clients in, in the economic client that we're in um, to show them that, look, true diversification, you know, will historically outperform a 100% allocation to stocks. And, you know, because you, it's the law of large losses. If I took a 40% drop, I've got to make 60 to get back to where I was, basically. You know, and that's very important in retirement because typically the money's coming out of the portfolio. It's one thing if you're continuing to work and you're putting money in, you're buying at lower prices. But on the other side of that, you're taking money out, you know, your withdrawal rate risk, your sequence of returns risk, those types of things that you and I have talked about here over the course of years is, you know, having too much in one particular basket is, you know, typically not in your best interest. And with all of those risks that you mentioned, uh, Chris, again, going back to this Kiplinger article, 14 reasons you might go broke in retirement, the number three reason they give is something that amplifies and multiplies all of those other risks. They, they point out the possible risk of you live too long. That, that is actually a, a significant financial risk and can have an impact in multiplying all of the other financial risks that we'll face in retirement. Absolutely. The number one risk of people is outliving their retirement, running out of money in retirement. And, you know, we implement a lot of strategies. Running out of money is one thing. Running out of income is something else. You don't want to run out of income. And, you know, one of the other points that Kipling, our article had for us, Peter, was, you know, only having one source of income in retirement, Social Security for most folks. Uh, you know, here in the state of Ohio, we have a lot of teachers that only get their teacher's pension. They don't get Social Security, to be fair, cover both halves of it here. Um, you know, and that's why you want to have your plan B. You want to have an alternate source of income and you know, we recommend income allocation in our portfolio planning, not just asset allocation. That's an investment strategy. It's not a retirement strategy. You got that, you know, I, we can't harp on that enough. You need to have a retirement strategy in addition and that complements your investment strategy. Well, again, if you are looking to properly align your portfolio to make sure that it is goal oriented with your timeline in mind with your specific financial and retirement objectives, having the help, having the assistance, the guidance, the perspective of a qualified professional with a trained eye to spot and identify holes that have been left unaddressed or opportunities to be more strategic that fiduciary financial guidance can have measurable benefits. Chris McIntyre here to provide that. Pick up the phone, give McIntyre Retirement Services a call, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. Go online to McIntyreRetirementServices.com. Lots of tools, resources, reports, calculators available online, McIntyreRetirementServices.com. And uh, if you're listening or viewing this, this podcast, please uh, like, subscribe, share, uh, and, and pass this information along to those friends, neighbors, loved ones who may also be in need, who this information may also benefit if they are dealing with uh, important financial decisions. There's a, a variety of different topics that are specifically addressed on the website. Uh, go again to McIntyreRetirementServices.com. You can find the full list and archive of previous editions of the podcast, lots of different subjects addressed. 800-868-1194, the number to call for that complimentary review, that retirement planning strategy session. Chris, in that strategy session, you specifically try to help uh, retirees, pre-retirees, workers and savers, retirement-minded individuals who are taking their planning and their financial future seriously, identify all of these reasons they might go broke in retirement and then plan strategically to address them and minimize or eliminate them as potential risks. Absolutely. is a great article there, Peter. Um, uh, you know, one of them was taxation. Another one was healthcare costs. And I would say that that is a big one that a lot of people miss. And, you know, we 
uh, obviously have been helping a friend of ours who has a cognitive issue for uh, going on, coming up on two years now, uh, you know, at the tune of 24 seven care at $16,000 a month. So, you know, there's a, 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 a substantial cost of that. And thankfully they had planned ahead of time for that. And we use somebody else's money to pay for that, not their own basically. And, um, you know, it's expensive to be in a nursing home. It's expensive to stay in your own home as well. Through proper planning, planning strategically in advance, you were able to do that. You were able to leverage the, the money to, to have that care and that protection uh, in, in, in the majority, at least, paid for by someone else. Correct, Peter. They used some of their pennies and bought some future dollars. That's what insurance is. And, you know, who doesn't have insurance? Everybody listening to the show here today has their house insured, has their cars insured. Many of the folks listening today don't have their life insured anymore because they, you know, may have outgrown the need for life insurance, if you will, but most of them don't have their estate insured, where if they went into a nursing home, the odds of your house catching on fire are one in 1200, but everybody insures their house just in case. The odds of spending some time in a nursing home is, you know, depending on the studies, about 50% for most Americans. And, you know, at the average stay of between two years and 30 months, you know, at seven to $8,000 a month, that's $100,000 a year. Why wouldn't you spend a few pennies to offset that risk? It, it confounds me, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, all of these are issues that you need to be addressing. You need to be cognizant of. You need to be aware of. You need to have strategic plans to address these factors, to have confidence moving into and throughout retirement, to be able to spend uh, your time in a way that you enjoy and not constantly worrying about the financial situation and, and your means of support. That's where the planning comes into play. And that's where Chris McIntyre can help and, and provide the assistance. Pick up the phone, give a call 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. Chris, another one that's mentioned on this Kiplinger list of 14 reasons why you might go broke in retirement. I think that those without a specific retirement income plan, which is different than, than the plan we had for investments while we were working. It is a, a fundamentally different paradigm. It, it is structured differently, the retirement income plan. I think those without it are much more susceptible to this, although we all know this is a, a potential risk, is simply we spend too much. We want to enjoy our time in retirement, but the first few years of enjoyment risks the last few years of potentially going broke. You're right. And, you know, with COVID-19, are people spending more money or less money? It depends on, you know, where you're at and what phase of life. It's, you know, you could say, hey, you know, our travel budget has gone down. But, you know, most folks that, that go into retirement pre-COVID, you know, are going to spend more money uh, early on because they want to go and do travel and do things while they're healthy and whatnot. You know, and they have to be careful on how much risk they take because if they're pulling more money out, they want to try to grow that money back as they're taking it out. Nobody likes to see the account values going down. They want to see them continue to go up as they pull money out of it. So, you know, we recommend taking a disciplined approach and understanding your monthly budgetary needs and having alternatives on where you're going to draw that money from, not just one basket uh, out of your stocks. Companies now paying less and less dividends here as they try to struggle through the, the COVID environment until we get some vaccine help and, uh, or some sort of medical treatments and companies can get back on better financial footing. Many of them have cut dividends to protect cash. Dividends are a huge source of retirement income. You know, we also use the annuity side of things. Insurance companies have been planning for the worst case scenario since their existence because that's what they do by that's nature. That's what they do. <laughs> Understanding what's the worst possible case, they know and have planned for pandemics and things along these lines because the reserve requirements that says they have to have the money to cover the worst case scenario is very comforting to those of us that, that make a living, part of our living, I guess, in that industry as well. And they're very well positioned to uh, fulfill all of their commitment. So that's why you see a lot of pension fund companies uh, or pension funds that turn the liabilities over to a major insurance company for the monthly, monthly claims on current employees. So, you know, if it's good enough for, you know, some of those 
Fortune 500 companies are certainly uh, a, a worthy consideration for millions of Americans that don't have that pension that they go out and, you know, I guess buy their own, if you will. And, you know, we help people do that in many, uh, many fashions, yeah, of course. Chris, circling back to one of the other reasons why we might go broke that you had mentioned, relying on a single source of income. Uh, pensions by and large are, are sort of extinct or, or on the endangered species list. And, and many of us don't have those. Uh, Social Security, We've seen a lot of publicity and press about the potential problems with the social security system. So at, at your office there at McIntyre Retirement Services, you're really trying to help clients, investors, retirees, pre-retirees set up a structured income plan with multiple sources of income. Uh, some from those, those sources, if, if we're lucky enough to have a pension and certainly with social security, but also supplementing those with streams of income from our personal assets. That's a specific type of planning that, that requires uh, a, a unique and different structure than the investment portion of our financial path and progress. You're right, Peter. And uh, I'm going to correct you there because you said potential social security problems. They're not potential problems. They exist. If you read your social security statement, you know that in the year 2035 plus or minus a year or two, um, uh, Social Security will not have any trust funds to pay the extra money that they need. That's stated on your Social Security. So that is a real issue that people will have to begin to um, it, take more serious because, uh, you know, unfortunately, the powers that be in Washington uh, and our political divide haven't had the wherewithal to address that situation. We do, you know, as advisors, we know that, hey, it may not work out in then companies and governments don't always live up to the promises that they have, that they make to people. So you have to take some of that accountability to yourself and, and you owe it to yourself to do that. That's proper planning. That's in your best interest to do. And, you know, we always plan for the worst and anything that happens other than that just makes everything better. So, you know, when we assume an investment rate of return on a portfolio over time, we, want to underscore that assumption. You know, I do not run retirement plans at 8%, Peter, you know, on investment plans. You know, that makes it look easy, but that's not anything that we would think is uh, always obtainable over a, a 10 year time frame. Which a lot of financial plan projections and illustrations and assumptions, Chris, they do include things like an 8% rate of return that is assumed to be consistent throughout the duration of the projection. Uh, we have to examine carefully those assumptions and, and make sure that they are reliable because if we don't achieve that, or even if there's just a, a few years that are down years instead of making 8%, it can dramatically alter the the outlook for the rest of the plan and and therefore for our lifestyle and the financial uh, wherewithal and, and support system that we have assumed was going to be there. The, the assumption of a rate of return versus the actual rate of return, the disparity there is a very dangerous um, place for for a retiree to be dependent on something that may or may not actually come true. Yeah, yeah, because, and here's why you can't assume that. So let's say the first year of investing, you lost 50%, okay? Your 100,000 becomes how much, Peter? 50,000. The next year you made 50%, the economy recovered and the government spent a bunch of money like they're doing right now and you made 50%, how much money do you have? Uh, not, not the original amount. We're only yep. halfway back up, right? Yep, you have 75,000. And then the next year you made, say, 30%, okay? Now you're back at 100,000. So you lost 50, made 50, and made 33, basically. That's an 11% average rate of return that got you whole. Hmm. That's why you can't spend averages. No, no, because we have exactly what we started with. And at this point in time, Chris, you didn't even factor in actually taking withdrawals, taking the income that we're going to need in retirement. So all of this is, is something that, ladies and gentlemen, you need to carefully examine in your planning. What are the assumptions that your plan is based off of? 
Are you comfortable with those? Are they dependable and reliable? Is there anywhere where you can take an assumption out and replace it with more certainty? And that's what Chris McIntyre works with his clients to help examine and identify. If you'd like a planning review, a detailed forensic financial analysis, that retirement strategy session, pick up the phone and give a call 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. Chris, I think maybe the final one we're going to have time to review here on the program today, but of the 14 reasons why you might go broke in retirement, again, this Kiplinger article, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure Chris McIntyre can, can send out the link if you'd like to uh, see this article, or you could probably just Google it, but uh, I, I really like the graphic on this one. It's got the guy with the hammer behind his back. He's kind of hiding it, and then the unsuspecting piggy bank is, is sitting there. Uh, you tap the wrong accounts. Chris, by the time we reach retirement, we've probably got, you know, a variety, a handful at least of, of different types of accounts, different assets in different places. And the order of operations, mapping out how and when we should access each one is actually going to fundamentally alter our success or failure in retirement. You're absolutely right, Peter. And so let's say you've got three piggy banks sitting up on the counter right now, and it's, that's someone's retirement. And one of those piggy banks is taxable, one is tax-free, and one is tax-deferred. Well, which one of those do you go into to buy a new car versus which one of those do you go into to just supplement your monthly budgetary issues? And, you know, we do that all the time. I just, uh, you know, was going through some emails here before you and I recorded the show on a client that says, hey, I need $36,000 to buy a car. What pile of money would you recommend that I take that out of? And that's a big lump sum of money, you know, nine months into the year, basically eight, nine months into the year. So we kind of know where their tax situation is going to be. It's not really going to change much for the rest of the year. They can control that. So you well, know, it's good it that helps. clients can call you with those kind of questions because that will impact the tax bill that they're going to be responsible for. Absolutely. And it, and it helps us make decisions. And then we can look at cost basis if they have a you know, like a, a taxable brokerage account, for example, we're selling investments. And then we look at the investments and all right, do we sell a couple of winners and offset them with a couple that might be down in value this year, especially and and cancel out any taxation issues. Doesn't that make good sense to everybody? Absolutely. And it's not what we make, it's what we keep. Actually, uh, you know, another one on the list was not considering the tax implications of our income and our distribution. So many reasons, ladies and gentlemen, why we might go broke in retirement. And that's why for years, decades, in survey after survey and study after study, it has been the number one concern of retirees in America, running out of money, running out of income in retirement by all means, something that we want to avoid. I think it was Tony Robbins who said, old and broke are two things that I don't want to be at the same time. And I think many, many would echo uh, the, the thought behind that statement. Um, but Chris, through proper planning, we can help to address that. Without the proper plan, we probably increase our odds of that unfortunately becoming a reality. It's a simple step. Take the time to invest into the planning process. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're serious about your plan, if you're serious about your financial future, if you are willing to invest just a little bit of your time, Chris McIntyre is willing to donate some of his for a complimentary review, a, a, an initial discussion to help you spot, pinpoint, and identify opportunities to be more efficient with your dollars, to strategically leverage those dollars, and to address some of the potential issues uh, that, that could impact your lifestyle, your comfort, your standard of living into and throughout retirement. We absolutely want to be as efficient as possible with our money. Let's take the time to make sure that we are doing so. Uh, Chris is there as a resource. Pick up the phone and give a call. 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. And Chris, I don't think any of the information on this list is, is really anything new to you. I, I'm sure that at some point in time in, in, your, in your experience and, and in planning process with uh, the savers and investors across Northwestern Ohio, you've probably identified at least uh, one of these or all of these in, in cases over, over time with you know, certain investors. Absolutely, Peter. Part of our job is to uh, assess and look for problems and then you know, work with the particular client on, okay, which of these problems do we want to solve? And you know, a lot of folks, uh, they just 
uh, in all reality, want to risk it in case they go into the nursing home. And that's just human nature that says, I'm not going to address the problem until it comes up. Uh, and I would say, you're much better off being proactive than reactive because the plan that you come up with when you have time to plan is much better than the plan that happens when you don't have as many choices. And, you know, as Peter was saying uh, to you folks that listen and, and are viewing us here on the podcast and YouTube and, you know, we do virtual appointments here. Uh, I work from home here about 99% of the time. I got the girls that are at the office there. It just works out well that way. So we do, you know, a lot of Zoom appointments. We get to know everybody. I look a lot better on Zoom than I do in a mask. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no downside for placing the call. There is no cost. There is no obligation. There is never any benefit for, for procrastinating. There is no need to meet in person to get this process started or to get answers to your specific financial questions. Uh, Chris is, is fully capable of operating either in person in an in-person meeting uh, or through technology with the, the comfort and safety uh, in mind of a virtual review. You can start the process by picking up the phone and giving a call. 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. One one nine four, the number to call. McIntyre Retirement Services dot com, the online resource where you can find more podcasts, more resources on demand uh, anytime, right in the palm of your hand. McIntyre Retirement Services dot com. 800-868-1194. And Chris, we always appreciate your time, your guidance, and and for you to be here as a resource on the program each and every week. And my pleasure to be with everybody out there. Stay safe and God bless you all here on the program as a resource each and every week, but there for you as a resource in person, give a call 800-868-1194. Chris is looking forward to helping and assisting in any way he can. Give him a call and uh, we do appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share the podcast with anyone who may need this important information. Chris, looking forward to hearing from you soon. 800-868-1194. We'll talk to you next time on your game plan for retirement. Visit McIntyreRetirementServices.com for many additional valuable resources, including other great episodes of Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre. Be sure to subscribe. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for asset under management while insurance products pay a commission which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation. Any comments regarding safe and secure investments and guaranteed income streams refer only to fixed insurance products. They do not refer in any way to securities or investment advisory products. Indexed or fixed annuities are not designed for short-term investments and may be subject to caps, restrictions, fees, and surrender charges as described in the annuity contract. 